Hello and welcome to another epic conversation. Hi Chris, so glad to have you here. So good to be here. It's amazing even to be considered for this because you talk to some amazing, talented and very creative people. So I'm glad to be here um, among them. You're all about community and you're allowing people to be themselves. And not just that default self, but all those little sides of ourselves that we're not sure that we can show other people. So it's a real gift what you're doing and I really look forward to this epic conversation. Where are you from and where do you currently live? It's interesting how you frame this question and I, I like that because I always wondered what, what does it mean to have a base? What does it mean to have a home? So for me it's the people around me. So yeah I was actually uh, born in America in, in Princeton. So we have that connection, but I wasn't there for very long. I grew up in a small town just outside of Bristol in the UK called Portishead. Um, it's about 45 minutes away from where I am now, so I haven't gone very far. Um, I'm now in East Bristol. Uh, yeah, I've been here for the last three or so years now. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm Chris, and as you know, I'm from the UK. And it's a wonderful city in that it has a lot of local festivals. So it celebrates art, and music and community. I name extemporary art, which means unplanned or with little preparation, which I think encapsulates what I do in that it's very embodied and it's very intuitive art and expressive. And I don't really have a process that I follow each and every time. What I'm trying to get from my YouTube channel is um, trying to connect to my audience and to uh, show the artist behind the art and it's been a while since I've been a complete novice so I'm learning how to talk to the camera, I'm learning um, about the camera and the uh, videography so it's going to be a while until I can really um, show my message and who I am but I'm really enjoying the journey and I'm really thankful that I've met people like yourself and, um, and Eric who we met through. So yeah that's what I'm hoping and I'm also slowly uh, becoming more comfortable with talking about my um, mental health journey and how I found out I was ADHD last year through my mental health getting worse through the last job I was in. I guess the way, the way it works in relation to my art is that I paint a lot of um, space women, which is um, kind of that feeling of being alien when growing up and feeling different and being a bit of a misfit, which I still feel right at times, um, and being adrift and uh, that daydreaming. And then I also paint a lot of wolves. Um, some are quite warped, um, so they're my Warped Wolves series. Um, I'm going to try saying that fast a few times. Um, yeah, so then I've got my more um, realistic but very colourful wolves um, and yeah, I guess I kind of con uh, connect to the, to the lame wolf and the spiritual and have a very majestic but on the flip side of that they're very um, territorial and very aggressive so I like that juxtaposition. And I've also had depression and anxiety, and also dyslexic and dyspraxic, which I think ADHD, uh, dyslexia and dyspraxia um, can, can affect your speech. So I'm actually learning how to speak again um, more clearly on, on YouTube. 
So that's been interesting, finding those insecurities and um, things to work on. So I'm all about that connection that art can bring. So we met through Eric Wen's Facebook group, Think More Deeply. What do you think about Eric's videos and how has he encouraged you? Yeah, I think Eric has a real talent for turning these complex ideas into a fun, easily accessible and also very personal um, you know, a video in order for us to connect to him. And um, he's, he seems like he's the same offline as he is online. And he's helped me a lot with um, the private messages, but also through the videos. So you are a painter. What kind of painting do you do, you do and where do you get your inspiration from? Yes, so I'm an artist, but I tend to favour the paint simply because I can paint over any mistakes I make and they just become layers and I just like the process of paint and I am kind of have a love affair with the uh, texture and the quality of the paint too. I find paint is where I can really show what I can do whereas other mediums not so much. I will use um, anything to hand really so I don't just focus on the paint. I've been experimenting more recently so yeah, the type of painting I do is very expressive, it's uh, very layered and textured, it's very emotion driven and I draw my inspiration from life really, but also how I'm feeling and the emotion uh, connected to whatever's happened. Ideas just come to me um, and then it's just working backwards to try and figure out how to uh, create that painting. I mean often they don't look exactly as, they, as the idea would be, but it's just figuring that out. I find if I've been in the studio too long or just by myself too long, then that's when the ideas um, stop. I'm so amazed by people who can make something with paint, like <laughs> a recognizable picture. I like to just play with colors and mix colors now and then when I'm finger painting with the kids, but I haven't done that in a while. I like to glue collages, cutting out things of magazines, putting it together, making my own thing. Anyways, which painting could you never part with and why? No, I think most of um, most of my art, I'm quite happy to see go because it becomes something else then. It, I think if it's in someone else's house, it becomes a whole new thing. I think my latest painting with the mermaid, I, we struggle to let go of simply because the resin on that one um, it's only the second time I've used it but it worked really well and um, the colours are good and it's just you know just trying new things really and it, it worked. In perusing your YouTube channel I see that you are on a fitness journey can you talk a little bit about that and what you are working to achieve Okay, so there's more to talk about than just the present day fitness journey. And it's quite an interesting progression because I, I've always been into the physical and how my identity is sort of tied up within that. But I had a lot of ill health when I was pretty nine and maybe around 20. I was part of the climbing society in uni, so that was 2009, so yeah, around then really is when I started being able to um, uh, go back to sport again. I um, then developed a fear of falling, so I had a, really, uh, a free fall of uh, 30 feet. So through that uh, fear of falling, I ended up going and training in martial arts. So I did karate for a few years, but I then dislocated my shoulder, so I was then looking for a new discipline for about two years. I tried um, uh, boxing for a while, but that wasn't quite right. And then I was watching the uh, CrossFit Games, and I thought, you know, that's what I want to be able to do. And I want to be able to look like that, like these athletes, and. Um, so I tried, I think, I think this is the third CrossFit gym I found and it's a real community of people and um, 
I started it maybe about three years ago, so I'm a lot stronger than where I was. And where where I want to get to is um, just being able to move better, really, and to remain strong. But the thing is, I also use it to help my ADHD and my mental health. So without it, my uh, mental health just really rapidly goes downhill and I develop a lot of physical symptoms in terms of fatigue and headaches and aches and um, very irritable uh, mood swings. Um, yeah, all of that comes back really quickly in a very physical, um, can hardly move, embodied kind of feeling where you feel these um, physical sensations rushing through your body. And with CrossFit, um, while that doesn't go completely, it's not at that really extreme level. So through doing it, um, it helps my um, my ADHD. So yeah, I've always been interested in finding finding out new ways to move. And um, today is uh, two days before lockdown, so the. Uh, gym will be shutting for another four weeks again, so I'm worried that my mental health, yeah, again, will go downhill a bit, which I did in, back in March, because I couldn't keep up the same level as what I'm used to. Um, so yeah, it's not just body, it's mind. Yeah, I hear you about exercise helping you to feel better in lots of different ways. I ran a mile every day for a month back when I was home because there was no point of working when nobody was coming in. There was no, there's never been a lockdown in Sweden, but yeah, I, I picked up running and I felt great. But the last time I was home for a month, it wasn't really possible to run because I was home with the kids and Morton had to do school and stuff. And I definitely did not do as great as I did before. So anyway, what are you proud of? What am I proud of? So, yeah, it's not something I really think about. Um, I don't tend to um, go into pride and to think of being proud, but I guess the way I try and think of it is um, allowing those little victories to be celebrated. Yeah, I struggle because with ADHD, you kind of um, have a poor self-image and thinking about it, I don't really... It's not something I normally say that I, I'm really proud of myself um, for doing doing that or having that happen. But <clears throat> I guess um, without going too heavy, that my proudest moment was when I gave up um, drinking and uh, taking drugs because I was self-medicating in terms of um, getting through that. So I had a, a, the experience of, of um, addiction. So. Um, the fact that I was able to stop and to um, then allow myself to become the person I always was and wanted to be and to keep improving um, was a massive thing for me and the best decision I've ever made. And the thing is, I kept giving up knowing it was bad. Um, I was brought up as a Christian, even though I don't um, necessarily label myself as that because I, I'm just very spiritual, but I was. The way I was brought up, I was very aware that what I was doing was wrong. Um, so I would stop, but then always end up going back to it. So uh, through the 12 step program, I've managed to, I'm coming up to three years now. So yeah, I'm very proud of myself for that. Yeah, it's not something I really talk about usually because I worry people will think of me as that rather than as I. Who I am because I'm just a good person that made some bad decisions and art has, has helped me in that um, healing process as well as the as well as the fitness as well and then relating it to art I've um, I guess I don't know if I call it proud but I was very happy and surprised that my application for Upfest the Street Art Festival in Bristol in the UK where everyone from all over Europe become, um, was accepted. So, yeah, I was very amazed and very, um, very happy with that one. And I don't know if I call it being proud, but 
um, yeah, that was definitely a small victory worth, uh, worth celebrating. There's also the art battles I was part of, which I'm sure will start happening again at some point as well. Okay, so it's time for me to ask you some questions, Katie. And if there's any that you don't want to answer, then you probably have cut this out already. Okay, so I love a good love story. And I was just wondering how you and your husband met and if there's some sort of uh, tale or story there. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were living in America at one point and now you're living in Sweden. So I would love to hear the story behind that. I am from the US and Morten is from Sweden and we met in Germany when we were both a part of this Christian theatre company called Covenant Players. And I remember seeing him for the first time, this very tall, skinny, practically platinum blonde, blue-eyed guy. And I wasn't thinking romance or anything, I was just thinking PEOPLE! Because I like people and I'm always excited to meet new ones. And it was especially exciting when new people would join Covenant Players because it's like welcoming new people into our community. So I, I met him before I was technically supposed to meet the new people because they were late. So I when, I, when the car pulled in, I like went straight to it and it was like, hi, hi, new people. I do not remember seeing the other people. Maybe they'd already left the van or it was just so incredibly memorable seeing Morton for the first time because he was just glowing. He was so happy and, and eager to be there. I don't know how our memories can kind of change and twist things that like now that I know he's the man that I was gonna marry, now I just like in my memory see this like glowing spotlight around him. <laughs> My next question is how did you get started on YouTube and was there a key moment that made you decide to start? And with that question, did you find it took a while for you to get comfortable on camera, like with myself, or did you really find that your acting background helped you with that? Dude, I have wanted to do YouTube for a long time. I'll show you how long. I bought this video camera in 2008. It's a mini DVD disc thingy. And I was crushed that I could not figure out how to get the footage from the camera to the computer. So I've got these discs <laughs> from 2008. And I wish I could see what's, what was on them. I did make some videos back in the day. I have this old other YouTube channel that I don't do much with. It's got some old videos that I made with a small camera. Um, I will include the link to a video I made about my, with that has some of that footage down below. Yes, to answer your question, yes. Um, my acting experience definitely helped, but even before my acting experience, my personality of being blah, people dun, 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 dun. wanting to just perform wanting to connect I, confidence is not something that I lack I mean sometimes I get a little bit tongue-tied trying to express myself but I embrace that I embrace the awkward and the unsure and the finding words because authenticity is more important than aesthetics Okay, now, this is a burning question I've had, which I'm sure a lot of your viewers who are new to the channel or have been wanting to ask, maybe. But you have this great way of your signature move where you're taking something that maybe was quite traumatic at the time through the nickname that kids gave you, and then through the genius that all comedians and all um, actors and people use is to uh, take ownership of that and turn it back on yourself. So I would love to hear more about how this Mottles of Death came into it 
and if there was a moment where you decided that you would include it on YouTube. Okay, first off, I have to say a huge, huge thank you for the picture, the painting that you drew. I just love it. It's so amazing. <laughs> I don't remember a moment. I looked back through my old vlogs. Like one time I was like, I watched a bunch of my very first vlogs from 2018 and I couldn't find where I first did it. So I just remember I used to end my vlogs like going bye or something. And then like one time I was looking at the screen as I was doing it, I was like, wow. They're just such huge gaping holes and it, it just kind of came out in this moment of beautiful artistic expression. Do you have any favorite quotes? So many, you know, um, stuff by Mother Teresa. There's, there's one that's like, the greatest poverty is to be unwanted or something like that. Ah, oh, I should look this up. Um, be alert, the world needs more alerts. Oh, 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 the, the, this quote that has stuck with me since I was a little kid, that was, is so deep. Just, come on, crown, get even. A person of any age is truly old when regrets of the past replace dreams of the future. If time was not a problem, then is there any new hobbies or things you would like to learn? Too much, man, too much. I, I want to learn everything, but especially I want to learn people's experiences. I want to hear their stories. I want to talk to all the boomers, all the, all the Gen Xers, all the millennials, all the Zoomers. I want to hear how, I want to learn their perspective, how, how the big events that shaped us changed them, affected them, how their parents raised them, what they grew up with, what their normal was, because our normals can be so different. And I want to learn about how the world got to be how it is now. And that's just a burning thing. Like, yeah, there's never going to be enough time for me to learn all the things there is to learn and have all the conversations I want to have, but I want to squeeze in as much as I can. Okay, this has been fun, happy to see you, and keep on creating because what you're doing is truly giving a gift to people, it's um, bringing people together, and I'm really enjoying watching your life and your vision through your YouTube video. Keep creating, and it's been lovely getting to know you through this process, through the messages we've had, and now through this video. So. Thank you, and I'm sure I'll chat to you soon. Thank you so much for all the hard work that you put into making this happen. And yes, you just made my day. So I want to say hugs. And with a little help from you, nostrils of death.